I snuck down to the States. I snuck across the border on a beer pilgrimage. I would almost like a little bit more of hot presence. There's just, like you said, some maltiness there, a little bit of sweetness. Th those beer those muscles beer are ready to, you know. They're ready to pounce. <laughs> Welcome back to Beer Brackets, everybody. Today we are doing an extremely important review. As you can see right in front of me, we have a beer from the oldest, the oldest brewery in the United States of America, my friend. This is a beer that we've wanted to review since before we started this channel. The last time I saw you in person, I think we were drinking a Yingling, and today we are finally getting to <laughs> review it, man. I snuck down to the States. I snuck across the border on a beer pilgrimage and I stole a case of Yingling and I brought it back through. Even though they gave me a hard time at the border, I got it back in. And now we are ready to review it, man. The beer pilgrimage is complete. Yes, and what <laughs> what a find, my friend. What a good thing to bring back. I know, I know, right? And you might be wondering, that's an interesting name. Where does that come from? Well, the name Yingling is actually German for young man. Right, that's something I didn't know. Well, there we go, a little bit of a fun fact. But this brewery's been around since 1829. And it's made it through prohibition by creating these things that they call near beers, right, the, El Sandro, that were about, what, 0.5% yes. alcohol, I think, that Correct. got through some of the guidelines to be able to still produce them during prohibition. Correct, yes. <laughs> yeah, you, you know some interesting facts about this brewery as well, right? I think you're, you're quite the yingling enthusiast being down there in Florida. I am a little bit like maybe it's because like somehow it's I've told this before, but it's uh, one of the beers that I when I moved here really like got my attention as uh, yeah. being extremely available and uh, yeah. very delicious. And on top of that, Yingling has a brewery here outside of just outside of Tampa. Exactly. The story is like obviously Yingling, the brewery, the original brewery is up in Pottsville in, in Pennsylvania. Dick Yingling, uh, the uh, fifth generation of the Yingling family took oh, over. Yingling. He expanded the brewery up there to a second brewery and then on on a trip he was doing one down one time down here in tampa like he got offered the, the opportunity to buy a brewery that was going on sale because it was not being used anymore and he de yeah. decided to purchase that and expand the production down here so there you go i tried yingling for the first time visiting al sandro down in florida a couple of years ago and i couldn't believe it for a really cheap accessible beer that you can find in any corner store any gas station oh yeah it's got really high drinkability and it is tasty. It's got some flavor to it. It's really clean, crisp, nice little mouthfeel, nice finish on it. It is a great beer and it's a shame. Obviously we're in different countries, so it's not like we can walk into a bar and rate this on tap, which maybe we will do one day, but I think, and I think maybe. you kind of agree with me on this, the on tap version of Yingling might be the preferred way to go, but we can work with what we can get. We have it in the bottle exactly. here and it's still pretty great in a bottle. I cannot wait anymore. I think we need to get right into this. Enough talking about beer without a beer. Let's crack these open and let's do this. Let's do it, my friend, it's time. Oh, look at this beautiful yingling. Just the smell of the bottle too. Like I, I might say this a few times during this review, but God, as far as like accessible mass produced and you know, mass produced, they say it's the largest microbrewery in the States, right? That you is said correct. there's some debate with that. Yeah. It, it's, you know, uh, the, the term craft, uh, it's always like a little, it's, classified in that category because it's not yeah. a, you know, a large brand and they still only distribute pretty much east of the Mississippi. I think Texas was added recently mm -hmm. and they're starting to up up the production now, but until very recently, uh, it was really only available in uh, Northeast and uh, some states yeah. below and uh, it's for sure east of the Mississippi. Look at that. There's like little to no head on it. And I might be wrong, but I remember on the draft version, there's a little bit more of a head. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a little bit more on the draft, but still like it, it's the head is not like one of the, uh, you know, the, the main it's not the uh, characteristics, I would say. I think the main characteristic, look at it, if you're thinking lager, look at that dark red amber color on it there. That's just amazing. Aroma cheers, my friend. Aroma cheers to you, my friend. If you can start, let me know what you think. Oh, those beer muscles. I keep just wanting to go in and take a sip. Th those Stop beer muscles beer are ready to, you know. They're ready to pounce. <laughs> This has come so far across borders, across countries, across cultures. Ooh, I, I love the aroma of Yingling. Like it's, <laughs> it's so unique in characteristics. And if I'm not mistaken, they're using Cascades as hops and uh, I think Cluster. It definitely and that's one of the things like that Cascade. I first really liked about being a lager, which is in a style that I really like, uh, but it has like that 
classic American hop character to it. And it's one of the yeah. first thing that made me fall in love with it. And uh, yeah. the hops are probably the main things uh, you smell, or I smell at least. Uh, you do get a little bit of that sweetness, malty sweetness, uh, that it coats everything very nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a 2.5 for me because all those nice. elements are extremely in balance. But it's 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 seems like we're almost right there to get that three. So two point five. What do you think, my friend? It's almost the perfect beer streak is broken already on the first category. I don't know if we we're expecting Yingling to get the perfect beer distinction, but you never know. You never know. You know what I'm finding? I'm finding the aroma is just starting to fade a little bit. When I first cracked open the bottle and poured it out, there was it was pretty strong. But now that it's been open for about two minutes or so, there's not much there. I'm getting a little bit of like, you know, the hops definitely, when you said the Cascade, I think any beers that you can think of with that use Cascade hops primarily kind of have a similar-ish aroma to them, which you can definitely get. I was hoping from what I remembered from Yingling, and again, maybe the draft version's a little different on this. I was hoping for a little bit more maltiness. That's not there, at least I'm not getting it. I'm gonna give it, I think, as far as lagers go, I'm gonna start with a two. I think it's, uh, it's inviting. It's definitely making me want to go in and take a sip. I'm a little disappointed that it faded a little quickly, but you know what? It's inviting. It's making me want to go right into the glass. So cheers, my friend. Cheers Let's get to, to you, my taste. friend. Oh, Yingling. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, the trying to describe here the taste. Uh, it starts with that initial bitterness. Very classic off the lager style. Very crisp acidic yeah. but what i like about it it has this very present uh, maltiness at least for me on the taste like shows up a little bit more as sweetness but it coats your palate very nicely and it's it's very drinkable took a sip and i was ready to go back like to have a <laughs> yeah. second one so it, it's very well done it's very in balance i will say and, and without getting too much into the mouthfeel it it I would almost like a little bit more of hop presence for me. Like the, the maltiness yeah. like translate a little bit too much into sweetness. Yeah. So I think I'm gonna go with a two sure. here. Two? A two, yes. Slowing down a little bit here on the taste, but what do you think, my friend? Mm-hmm. This is an interesting one because it's a very, very drinkable lager, like we've said already. So as far as drinkable lagers go, I think it accomplishes its job so amazingly well. I mean, if you want to compare this to its peers, if you want to compare it to Bud Light, if you want to compare it to Coors Light, if you want to compare it to any any of the other big market uh, lagers or Pilsners even that you can think of, it's so much more flavorful. Oh, yeah. There's just, like you said, some maltiness there, a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. It tastes like like beer. You know, like you get a really nice, just yes. very clean beer, malty taste to it. And the hops as well. There's a strong bitterness that kicks in there too. So it's a nice mix. Aside from that, there's not much else. So if you can just picture what hops taste like, if you could picture what malts taste like, put those both together in a really balanced, smooth way. And you pretty much got yourself some yingling. I think as far as lagers go, man, it, the taste is one of the things that drew me to it. I, I, I think a two, two is very fitting. I'm gonna stick with my theme of two here. But now the mouthfeel. My friend, you know we have to do beer bracket tradition around these parts. We gotta refresh oh, yeah. a little bit for the mouthfeel. It's the best part. I got a little too excited and I poured out most of my bottles. So I only have a little bit left, but it's enough to freshen it. There you go. Look at that oh. fizziness. Fizzy. I thought, I'll let you go first, but uh, I have some thoughts. Hmm. Bubbles, Bubbles are very present at first, uh, but they fade very quickly. And I think yeah. that kind of like showcases also in the in the head, at least mm -hmm. retention here. Like you can kind of see that the carbonation is there, but it's it's not one of the main components. No. Um, you get that sweetness that I was talking about translates for me in a little bit of uh, oily stickiness uh, mm -hmm. that I've talked about before. I kind of wish like almost like that oiliness was like a little bit less and there was a little bit more of that carbonation. I think I want to stick with two? the two. I think two is very deserved because it has those elements, but a couple of them like for me, like are <laughs> a, li a little bit lacking. What, what do you yeah. think my friend? Imagine this beer was more carbonated. Imagine if it was just a little bit bit you know had a thick not even a thick head nice. on it but a little bit of a head on it how it would just take it to another level i this is a tough one this is a really really tough one i mean take a look at it there's visibly doesn't you can see some bubbles rising from the bottom there but it doesn't look like it's overly carbonated and it's not the head dissipates right away there's not much lacing on the glass when you swish the beer around 
like you said there is some oiliness on there which i think factors into that i think like the overly a, a good test i think to look for oiliness in a beer is if you swish it around and there's no lacing on the glass there's no residue i think that normally correlates to having a bit of an oily mouth feel it's just a little thicker it's a little bit more it coats whatever it touches a little bit more without leaving any bubbly residue um, when you take a sip though it's kind of fizzy like i said before that word fizzy was something i wanted to come back to it's not like a million bubbles bursting in your mouth it's not like a velvety carbonation like we talked about with the orval recently it's very fizzy like very intense little bubbles it's nice it's a nice mouth i think two is very fitting very very fitting there for a lager but the finish man the finish is what drew me in to yingling the first time i had it so what do you think about it I think Drew is the right term to use here. That <laughs> Drew. drews you Drew into you the, the beer. Like it's 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 fitting. Very fitting. The finish, I think you're absolutely right, because while on the taste and on the mouthfeel, there's a couple of elements, at least for me, that are, you know, very good and very well balanced, but not quite enough to bring it to that you know, perfect beer territory. However, being a beer that is extremely accessible, easy drinking and available, it's amazing in that sense. But the finish is where like it shines in the sense that you get those elements that uh, you were describing, like the hops and the malt mm -hmm. perfectly in balance. And I will add, it has that like classic, like American hop like presence. So it's, it's yeah. different compared to any other uh, European inspired lager that so it, it has its very. own character. And even the maltiness is more like a, almost like a biscuity kind of like character, mm -hmm. probably because of the that amber uh, style that they're going for. So I, I, I kind of like all of these elements. I, I think I'm gonna still stick with the two because it's, it's, it's all well balanced, but it almost like uh, fades almost like too quickly, leaving you like wanting more. And uh, and, and and it's like, oh, is, is it already finished? <laughs> what do you think, my friend? Yeah, I haven't. It's always tough when you're talking about these really easy drinking beers because they're, I mean, I would assume they're designed that way, right? So if you're talking about in the finish, oh, it dissipates really quickly, or I'd like some more bitterness, or I'd like some more maltiness on it. It's meant to be something that, you know, you could pop open on a really hot day, nicely chilled, and you could drink, you know, you could drew through like a good uh, 12 of them, right? If you really wanted to. Um, but there are things that lack because of that. So not in a bad way, just not something that would really bump it up to something that'd be a unique character filled beer that would get a three necessarily. So I think a two is really fitting. This beer is super straightforward. Everything you get on the taste, everything you get on the aroma, you get on the finish. There's no surprises there. It's malt, hops, done. I like what you said about the, you know, the American hop presence, because it is, it's similar to like, if you take a sip of a Coors Light, if you take a sip of a Budweiser, if there's that specific bitterness from the American hops that you get that you find here. So it's in that same family, yes. but it just, it takes that and it adds that just character and maltiness to it that makes it so enjoyable. So I think it too, so my friend, as an overall beer experience for Yingling, traditional American lager, what would you give it? So this this is like we said before, where the intangibles come into play. Wow. It's it's and it, this is a tough one, so I'm gonna have to take another sip here. Please do, please do, man. Sips are always very welcomed. Uh, you know, after trying to meditate and be the beer barometer that yeah. we try to be, uh -huh. <laughs> I I think I think that for once I'm gonna let like the emotions here take over, and yeah. I think I'm gonna give it like a three. And, and the reason is three on three. The reason is is that I really, think I know it, your reason, but tell the public. Yeah, it, I, I gotta <laughs> I gotta say it. it's it's this is probably one of the first like easy accessible beers that I was able to you know yeah find once I moved over here that remind me of uh, you know lager traditions coming from Europe, but also had something new and interesting that introduced me to a lot of the flavors and tastes of American beers. And it has such a, an amazing history. It's, it's close to home now for me. And I have so many nice memories, including uh, some that we share together uh, with this beer. So like mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, it, it deserves that three, in my opinion. What do you think, my friend? Yeah, I had twos all the way through, and I think as an overall experience, I'm going to bump it up a little bit to a 2.5. I'm going to go all the way up to That's a three. That's fair. But it's definitely a 2.5. As far as mass produced, let's say it that way, it's not exported. So for me, it's a little bit of a luxury. It was nice to travel down to the States, 
um, recently in the South and uh, and tried for the first time. I did really enjoy it. Again, I think the draft version is a little bit superior, so I'd like to revisit this one day. Maybe we have a pint of uh, Yingling in a pub and see what we think. Surprisingly enough, with the clear green bottle, I was expecting a little bit of skunkiness a la Stella or Heineken. Yeah. But Maybe it's just the bottle that I had. I did buy a closed case, so maybe it didn't get a lot of light on it over time, but that wasn't a factor, which was surprising to me. I was expecting that. Uh, yeah, 2.5, men. I think as far as lagers go, easily accessible lagers, at least where you are in the States, I think it's a very good option. You can really taste the hops. You can really taste the malt. So for a beer lover, somebody who actually likes and wants to taste their beer, but still wants something easy drinking, can't go wrong with the Yingling. All right, everybody, calculating our final scores for Yingling traditional lager. For me, it came out to a 3.5 on 5, which in our rating system, it's a great beer. And it is. It's a, it's a great lager. For Alessandro, a little bit higher. A little bit higher. Might have been the intangibles of the overall category. We don't know. But it came out to a 3.83, which in our system is an excellent, excellent <laughs> beer. Well, there you go, everybody. There you go. We finally got to Yingling American Lager. Let us know down below. What do you think about the Yingling? You enjoy it. What's your favorite form of it? One day, I can't get my hands. I had to go through a whole, a whole impossible mission to get this up to Canada. So one day, hopefully, <laughs> I can get the cans and maybe we can do a can versus bottle, do that comparison. Would love to try it on draft. What's your favorite form of Yingling? Let us know down below. Cheers, everybody. Hopefully, you enjoyed this review. Hopefully, you had a Yingling along with us along the way. Don't forget to close your Yingling beer brackets. Never forget. Mm -mm. Never forget. <laughs>